Hello guys, so in this video I'm going to explain you how to get started with the book uh, Learning Scrapey. Before we begin, I would like to uh, set the expectations right. There are two much more introductory uh, books out there that happen to have the same name, Web Scraping with Python from O'Reilly and uh, from Pact. So one thing to notice with those two books is that they mention web scraping on their title, right? Web scraping, web scraping with Python. And uh, this is different to Scrapey. Scrapey is a framework and actually it's a quite advanced framework. Those two books mention in chapter 3 specifically, this one over here, and in uh, chapter 8, this one, the Scrapey framework. I would highly recommend to use those two books to get all the basic knowledge you need before you start using Scrapey. Actually, even those two books will not teach you, in my opinion, web scraping. They will just give you some tools that will be useful in your arsenal when you need to scrape websites. The only way you will learn web scraping is by doing it. If you have a web developer background, so you already know HTML and JavaScript, this would be faster, way faster. It might be a matter of a few hours. If you are not so familiar with web technologies, then it will certainly take uh, somewhat longer, maybe up to six months of working in the subject. And the reason is that, for example, you might be able to pick up a book about MySQL and learn it fast, because MySQL is a very specific thing. But web scraping is about all the websites out there on the web, and each of those websites is different. So there are some broad categories that both their books and my book try to address. This is a commonality. But apart from that, there are specific tricks that every website has. And this is why web scraping takes lots of experience. And one more thing. Obviously, when you start knowing those tools, suddenly uh, the web looks like a huge opportunity. So one of the first ideas somebody has is like, let's scrape LinkedIn, uh, let's scrape uh, Google. But while having those ideas, it's uh, important to remember our own swords. So many of those activities might actually be illegal. And for example, this guy uh, got 1 million uh, of fines and 35 years in prison. And actually, unfortunately, he committed suicide a few weeks later. And what he did was effectively scraping copyrighted content. So don't take this lightly and think about it and talk with your lawyers potentially, because uh, if something uh, looks like too good to be true, it might as well be illegal. So for example, LinkedIn might be paying teams of tens of people to protect their content from being scraped. And this means that scraping any high profile website is extremely difficult because there are countermeasures that prevent you from scraping it to start with. So I believe that uh, either of these two or three books hopefully will not give you uh, the tools to shoot yourself in the foot. So what is Scrape about? It's when you have tens of thousands of pages that you want to crawl and the, the traditional means like requests and all the, those Python scripts uh, do not serve you anymore. You need to start worrying about threads and about performance. And uh, at that point, Scrapey allows you to increase your productivity a lot. So many of the problems that you would have to solve manually with the other frameworks, you will be able to solve them easily with Scrapey. The main idea is that you go to EC2 or any other cloud provider and uh, you buy a few uh, small or micro instances that are quite inexpensive and you host your Scrapey application in there and it runs continuously. For example, monitoring hundreds of new sites and giving you feeds of all the new data that you want. So this is the scope for Scrapey. It's for big projects that run on the cloud on Linux machines. It's quite difficult to set up a dev machine with Windows and this way this book gives you an environment that is very similar to what you will have actually in production. So many servers, web servers and distributed uh, scrappy D servers, all those things are in this book. So with these things in mind, let's get started. I will start with the most demanding uh, 
operating system. Uh, actually, even if you're running on Linux or on, on Mac, it will be much easier. And uh, as you see, it all starts uh, going to CMD. So I just write CMD while clicking the start down left and I open a command prompt. Here's the command prompt and uh, really it has nothing installed. So if I type SSH, no SSH. It, if I type Vagrant, no Vagrant. So even Git, no Git, nothing. So really we have to set up some software before we have the virtual machine inside Windows. So we get uh, back to Appendix and uh, we go to Windows installation and we see that the first step that we have to uh, do is to install Vagrant. So we open a browser. Make sure that you use Firefox or Chrome because actually Internet Explorer has some problems when you try to connect to localhost. Uh, so it would be better to use Chrome and Firefox or otherwise uh, know what you're doing. So I click download and Windows. This downloads Vagrant and I'm going to install it in a second. Great, so it downloaded successfully. So now click, click and next, next, next. And we have a typical installation, nothing extreme. And the installation finishes and it says about uh, something about restarting. We don't have to do it now since we're going to install uh, more software. And now we scroll a little bit down and uh, see what's next, VirtualBox and Git. So we want to install those two and we can actually install them both in one step by using uh, Docker Toolbox. So we go docker.com, Docker Toolbox, download for Windows. Okay, download completed, double click to install. Uh, again, next, next, next install then here are those uh, prompts install and then we can finish the installation so if I click on the start menu now I should be able to see the virtual box over here so this is just an administration panel it doesn't mean that we have any virtual machines running but it is a place uh, that we can see the virtual machines that are really running at this moment in time. So if uh, when I will do Vagrant app by using this VirtualBox manager, uh, I will be able to see my virtual machine here and also pause it or stop it. But really I don't need to have this window open in order to run a virtual machine. Vagrant uh, will uh, be running virtual machines on the background for us. So I can close this window and now it's a good time to restart our computer. Uh, in order the changes to take effect. So after we restart the computer we can see here again we go CMD to start the command prompt and now we can see that everything works for example Vagrant and also Git but SSH doesn't work and in order to do that we have to do one more step which is uh, to open environment variables edit the system environment variables and then over here. So here's the path, we open this one and we press question mark and we will go C program files git user bin. Okay, so we copy this path if we see SSH is in here. Okay. So we add this to the path over here with a question mark. Click OK and OK again. Those instructions are of course in the book Enable SSH Client. You can see them over here. So as soon as you do that, you close the command prompt, you restart the command prompt, and now SSH works too. Excellent, so we're now ready to get started. So we go to a place that we can easily find, for example, desktop. And what we do is we go git clone and then we use the scrapy book URL. Git clone scrapy book. Excellent. So now you can see uh, the scrapy book directory uh, over here. And here are all the chapters. So we keep this open. 
and again we follow the next instruction which is to go into that directory cd scrapey book and then vagrant app no parallel okay cd scrapey book vagrant app no parallel and that's it so right now if we open the virtual box we'll uh, see what happens behind the scenes i will keep this also on the side because um, what takes place right now is download a virtual box image from the web after this completes it will uh, be loaded inside virtual box and all those virtual machines are going to start for us we don't have to do anything extra so as you can see here, uh, the estimated time is 12 minutes. In other locations, it's more like five minutes. But in some countries and with some internet connections, I have seen here something like 19 hours, which is quite a bit. So if you have this problem, go to scrapybook.com and uh, go to the issue tracking system. Close the issues and go to issue number five, Vagrant app is slow or not working. So right here you will find an alternative methodology uh, that obviously has been replaced by the automated system here. Uh, but anyway, if you if this is really slow for you, uh, you can use just your browser to download this uh, virtual box image. Right, click here, save link as, and save it somewhere. For example, your desktop where you can find it later. I just cancel it for now. But as soon as this completes, what you do is you open CMD go to desktop and obviously here you will find uh, this file you downloaded scrappybook.box and you're going to do vagrant box app as described here and uh, it will import the box and then vagrant app will work uh, directly here without downloading the image for you of course this is completely optional for most people uh, this will be just fine and in a few minutes you will have the visual box image downloaded on your computer so we can see now the download completed, process 100% and then the import happens and you can see this also takes some time but once this is done uh, you will not have to do it again ever so this is one of all this process up to now is a one off. Nice, so we can see now the process uh, started and Vagrant starts a virtual machine for us, the name becomes Docker Provider there are several configurations done automatically for us from Vagrant, allow access. This allows the virtual machine to open ports to our host computer. And now the virtual machine boots. So Linux starts inside these virtual machines. And we can see here the web server starts and now the Spark server. And now the Elasticsearch server. This happens very quickly. And these are steps that might have to be repeated when we, uh, you know, shut down the virtual machine and restart it. So Redis starts, MySQL starts, and now the ScrappyD servers. So all these things happen inside the virtual machine. And last, the, the dev machine starts. Awesome. So you can see here these provisioners will not run since the container doesn't support SSH. This is not a problem. This is exactly as uh, it was supposed to be. Uh, for some people it seems like an error, but it's not. Great. Uh, so right now we'd like to make clear we are still inside our Windows box and uh, inside our host computer, right? And um, you can see the files here of the host computer and everything looks great. The commands that I write inside this prompt right now are those commands. So uh, this uh, cd dot dot cd scrapy book, all those are Windows command. Also, in order to clear the screen here, I do CLS. Okay, CLS because I'm on DOS. But what I will do right now is to SSH to the dev machine. This happens by doing just Vagrant SSH. Again, in the context of this system over here, uh, we are in our host window machine and I want to connect uh, to this dev machine over here. Great. So you can see right now this root at dev. Okay, this means that I'm actually in a Linux shell now. I'm inside the dev machine. And uh, for example, uh, who am I? Root. Okay, I'm the root inside this dev machine. I can ping other machines. For example, like I'll try to uh, see if I can connect to the web machine or the Elasticsearch or the this machine. And uh, this is how I do it. Ping web. I can say I can connect. 
uh, I can also try uh, ping elastic search. Okay, it works fantastically. Ping MySQL. So all those uh, virtual servers are inside uh, this virtual machine. Okay. Also remember, this is uh, just a window. Okay. This is just a manager. I can close it. Uh, still nothing bad happened. I'm still here and I can reopen it like this. Excellent. So right now all those contents of uh, the scrappy book directory in my desktop are mount inside the book uh, directory of my virtual machine. Again, I do a less. This is a Linux command and I see the book with green and blue letters. See the book ls again and then I can see all the chapters here. I can uh, I can read and write from those directories. For example, I can do less. This is also a Linux command. Let's readme.md and I will read here the contents of readme.md q to exit or I can do touch a.txt for example and this will create an a.txt file here. I can rm to delete it a.txt and the file disappears. So we can see the directly the connection between what happens uh, inside the virtual machine uh, and more specifically on the dev host and the scrapy book directory here. If I want to start and run the examples of for example chapter 3 what I do is I see this CHO3 change directory ls to see the directory cd properties ls okay and uh, here we can see the typical uh, scrapy uh, project so we can see the scrapy.config and three exactly as I uh, explained in the book in chapter three and I see here the contents so properties and the spiders like easy manual etc I can get to the same place by clicking here you can see exactly the same files and those all and you can't only see them but you can also edit them so obviously I recommend something like Notepad++ uh, at very least but even if you have Notepad here you can open and edit your spiders and you can see here for example the easy uh, spider which is uh, uh, presented on chapter 3 and it starts by hitting this URL okay so again let's uh, for example try to check the connectivity to this URL uh, if I do curl and then I use this URL. Here are the contents of this page. Now one thing to remember is that if I open the browser in my host machine and I use the same URL nothing will happen. Nothing good. Okay. And the reason is because this web only applies in the context inside the virtual machine. So dev can contact web. Dev can contact Elasticsearch with ES. Uh, what we do from outside is we just forward the port which means that we use here localhost localhost and here is exactly the same content that we got from the web from within the virtual machine so URLs from within the virtual machine uh, all those virtual servers in there we use the little host name there web and if you want to see the same content outside the virtual machine you just use localhost and I press here Control L to clear the screen or clear it's the same command and let's try to run a spider for example scrapy crawl easy again I'm running now chapter 3's example and uh, just a little bit before the end just to demonstrate where we are at the end of chapter 3 scrapy crawl easy so this is exactly what I do here let's see if it runs Excellent, and we can see data downloading here. So if I wanted to output those data somewhere, I will go again CHO3 properties, rerun the same thing minus o uh, test.csv, and we can see the test.csv file created here, and we can see it has all the data we expected. Uh, title, description and whatever we like in CSV format. So everything works perfectly and uh, I will look, move on now and run the most advanced example we have the Cornerstone project at chapter 11 just to demonstrate the complete extent of features of uh, this virtual machine. 
So as soon as we get to chapter 11, we can see this very nice uh, summary screen here and it shows us essentially how to set up four such uh, command prompt uh, windows. So again, I will start here, cmd, open to, cd, uh, desktop, slash, scrapy book, vagrant ssh, and do the same two more times. Actually, over here, I have to do vagrant ssh spark instead, do vagrant global status, and here I can see the ID of the Docker provider, and I want to connect to that one, so vagrant ssh and this ID. Excellent. And I start running commands on those windows. On the first window, I start this command again in chapter 11. So you can see here the resources each of those virtual servers uh, consumes. And then on the second window, I do cd book ch11 properties and then scrapey monitor scrapey d star. And you can see here the status of those three scrapey d servers. Now we'll go directly to the fourth terminal and do ls as instructed so we can see book and items here and then we do spark submit. Excellent. So we can see the Spark Analytics program here running and now it's the time to start our crawlers from here. So we go to the third terminal, CD book, chapter 11 properties and then we keep following those instructions, deploying the spiders Excellent, and let's try to understand where we are right now. So we are over here on the dev machine and uh, we have deployed our spiders on the scrappyd's running on those three servers, scrappyd1, 2, 3. And all of them are going to crawl uh, from the target website in the web server and put items in the Spark server, which is going to perform the real-time analytics here on the right. So this is exactly what I'm going to initiate right now by issuing the last command. Scrappy crawl dist. So here we'll see uh, crawling 2000 URLs by hitting the index pages and sending them to Scrappy D servers here. You can see here how CPU load changes. These are dev sending the batches to the Scrappy D servers and as soon as the running completes for some of those we will see the items being processed by the Spark Analytics server. A few seconds later we have all 25 batches completed so our dev scrape will complete and you can see here the first ones finishing so the data now is ready for Spark and you can see here the analytics that improve as more data becomes available and the last process completes right now running just one all the others completed and what is the real message here uh, i leave it as an exercise it's a secret message just for you so if we count the number of items uh, crawled we can see that it's 50,000 items and these are completed in about two or three minutes. So if this is how fast you can crawl with a single virtual machine, imagine how quickly you can crawl with uh, a few cloud servers. So uh, now, how do you shut all this system down? Uh, obviously when you run a virtual machine, if you're in a laptop, it will burn some energy and we don't want that. Uh, so it's nice to shut this down and the easiest way to do it is right click here and then uh, just save state from here. So you will see as soon as you do that all those windows will get deactivated. Yes, we are disconnected and this machine is down. Also if you try to connect uh, now through the web browser obviously you will get nothing again. In order to restart the virtual machine no surprises here, Vagrant app no parallel, you can see restoring, which is even faster uh, than starting putting the machine from scratch. And again, Vagrant SSH to connect to dev, excellent, and then ls. 
cd book ls and you can see the files here. There are some times where you will come to this book directory and it will be empty. If this happens to you, all you have to do is to just exit and then vagrant destroy dev. This destroys just the dev machine within the virtual machine. So destroy it. Yes, we can see it's quite fast. And then uh, you just up that server, vagrant up dev, creates all the links, vagrant SSH to connect to it. Excellent, ping ES, well, I can connect to the Elastic server, ping web, okay, I can see my web server, CD book, LS, we can see all the files there. One final note, when you connect to the web server from your host browser, uh, you will see here resource not found. This is not a problem, it's just that uh, the page, the website doesn't have an index page, but if you click to the properties, you will see that everything works fine. So this is not a problem, it's just uh, the way web server is structured. Next, it takes us to page one, so everything works fine. So we had a look on how to install all the necessary software, and run even the most demanding examples of this scrapey book. So I hope you enjoy this book and go and create nice applications that make our world a better place.